Lake Tahoe. In my opinion, the most stunning lake in the U.S. and possibly the world. Situated at around 6,250 feet above sea level between the states of Nevada and California, it's a hub for all sorts of outdoor recreation, but it's also known for being staggeringly deep. Welcome to Lake Tahoe, the second deepest lake in the United States and a key feature of the Sierra Nevadas. If you're familiar with the U.S. Great Lakes, you know that Lake Superior, an absolutely massive freshwater lake, is only around a thousand feet deep. So why is the relatively smaller Lake Tahoe way deeper? See, lakes like Lake Superior are glacial lakes. So tens of thousands of years ago, there was massive glaciers in the Lake Superior region that scoured the earth and depressed it, allowing for that lake to fill that 1,000 foot deep basin. But Lake Tahoe is a little different, and in order to explain why it is so deep, we need to talk about faults, and most importantly, we need to talk about geology. Here is a list of all the faults that run through the Lake Tahoe area. You can clearly see this massive one right here that runs through the eastern side of the lake, which also happens to have the deepest average depth. So let's see why this fault is here. Lake Tahoe is located within the Sierra Nevada, but this isn't completely true. See, the Sierra actually make up only part of the containment of Lake Tahoe. The eastern side of Lake Tahoe is actually a separate mountain range known as the Carson Range. I'll briefly overview how these two ranges came to be. First, the Sierra originated as a huge series of volcanoes resulting from the sinking and melting of an oceanic plate going under North America several millions of years ago. If you don't know, plates are essentially pieces of Earth's outer layer called the crust which move separately from one another driven by currents in inner Earth. Magma that rose up to feed these volcanoes didn't always make it to the surface. In fact, a huge amount of it pooled up beneath the volcanoes and solidified to form a large body of a rock called granodiorite. Several millions of years passed and the volcanoes eroded down and the plate feeding them fully subducted. The subducted plate was actually going in a different direction than the plate behind it, the Pacific Plate. So when it subducted, it dragged part of the northwest moving Pacific plate with it, which caused an absolutely massive fracture to form, cutting through California. This is because the North American plate is moving south to southwest, and the Pacific plate, which was now partially under North America, was moving northwest. The huge fracture is known as the San Andreas Fault. The leading theory is that this fault created a huge amount of right lateral pressure, which caused a massive amount of now exposed granodiorite to be uplifted into the Sierra Nevada. The stress imposed on the continent also was a potential source of stretching in the region east of the Sierra. This stretching was intense, which led to the formation of a corresponding left lateral fault to relieve the stress of the San Andreas Fault called the Walker Lane. The stretching further induced by this fault caused the land east of the Sierras to expand. This land did not expand without a fight. Smaller faults formed parallel to each other called normal faults. The areas in between these faults got pushed up to accommodate the stretching while the areas beside the faults got pushed down. This created a region of the U.S. and Mexico known as the Basin and Range Province. The Tahoe Basin is a part of this province, and one of the mountains that got pushed up was the Carson Range, which now acts as the eastern rim of Lake Tahoe. Whew, okay, moving on. Faults also act as amazing channels for magma in the inner earth to make its way up to the surface. A volcano formed along the smaller faults between the Carson Range and the Sierra, known as Mount Pluto. Here at the northern end of Lake Tahoe, we have Mount Pluto, an ancient volcano that erupted several times 2.3 million years ago, sealing off the Tahoe Basin and making the beautiful Lake Tahoe. 
So yeah, essentially all of the explosive contents of Mount Pluto acted like a plug which linked the Carson Range to the Sierra and allowed a lake to form in the high elevation region between the two mountains. Tahoe is filled up by a myriad of natural springs and even a tiny river, but the main contributing factor to why there's so much water going into it is snow melt. Some areas of the Lake Tahoe Basin can receive upwards of 400 inches of snow every year. So back to why it's deep. It's essentially a deep valley between two mountains that is still shifting today due to it being right along a zone that is accommodating a huge amount of force from tectonic activity. Almost every super deep lake on Earth is a result of the lake being located on a fault line or tectonically active zone, just like Lake Tahoe. Now, as I've mentioned multiple times in this video, Tahoe is 2.3 million years old by some estimates, which actually places it in potentially the top three for oldest freshwater lakes anywhere on Earth. Thanks for joining me on this geologic exploration of Lake Tahoe. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. New videos come in every two weeks, so stay tuned for the next one.